Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am trying out all the products in my Boxy Lux and my Boxy Charm Premium for the month of July. And there is a lot of stuff to try out, so let's go ahead and get right into it. I need to hydrate a little bit just to prepare myself. I don't know what I was thinking leaving my hair down. This is my natural state of wreckage when I sleep on my hair damp that is better so first off we have a couple products that are not makeup and skincare related first off this satin pillowcase and eye mask set is really cute it's a beautiful leopard print i think i kind of bitched about this ugly white strap on it but we're just gonna ignore that fact i guess i can put it on my face there we tried it i seriously can't wait to use this i'm just putting any new household stuff to the side because i'm moving in literally just a couple of weeks also this from skin and co sardinian spirit i got this one in my boxycharm premium it is a shower gel so i am going to use this it smells really good it has like a very like lemony, citrusy kind of scent. So I'm just going to throw this in the shower when we get moved. Again, I am just like putting off using so many products right now. I need to pack stuff away. Skin & Co. I've had some hits and some misses with, but it smells good. I think it'll be fine. And one more product quickly that I'm not going to put on my face right here on this video is the Glow Recipe Avocado Melt Retinol Sleeping Mask. Obviously, I am getting ready, so I'm actually putting makeup on and I'm going to go about my day. So I don't want to put retinol on my skin and then be in the sun so I have tried this and I really really like it I'm still like a little bit sad that the original formula went away because I don't have the option to like use a retinol serum and then put this on you could probably still mix it you know I'm just like putting my toes in first to make sure my skin is okay I had somebody ask to one of you guys said like I don't know how your skin doesn't freak out my skin usually is really really good and receptive to almost all skincare I very rarely have irritation and if I do it's usually from using a tool and not a product or ingredient. So thank goodness my skin is not sensitive to products because this would be a whole a whole different situation if it was. But I want to tell you guys I really like it and I love their products. I also have down below some of my like shopping links. I have a section of just like literally links to brands. That way if you want to go check them out you can. I do get like a teensy little little percentage if you shop with those links. It's very small but everything helps. All right now let's get into the goods. First off I'm going to try the Kylie Skin Foaming Face Wash. So as I told you guys in my unboxing I have never purchased anything from Kylie Cosmetics, Kylie Skin, any of that. I've just never been that intrigued to go and purchase stuff. I am excited to use it though and see how it goes. Judging by the ingredients, I actually think that it looked pretty good. Now it does say to apply to wet skin and gently massage in circular motions. So I'm gonna grab some of my little Evian to hydrate my skin. This Evian literally comes in so handy when I'm filming and I need to like, you know, wet my skin like I'm doing now. Just a little spritz. It's so much easier than trying to like go to my bathroom and film this cleanser because I'm I'm lazy. I feel like with foam cleansers, I don't know if it's just like I haven't tried the right ones, but I haven't found them like super effective. I feel like it's just like super, super topical and doesn't really like deep cleanse, but this could be the exception to that. I could fall in love. It smells a little bit fragrant, but it's not strong. I'm feeling a tingle. If this is the one time that my skin freaks out with a skincare product on camera after I just said my skin's not that sensitive, I will be so pissed. I do feel a little bit of a tingle though. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this off and be right back. All right, so don't be alarmed if my skin looks a little bit flushed. That happens with everything. That did not feel comfortable and I don't know if it's maybe because I did exfoliate this morning that could be something but still like I exfoliate all the time and don't have any irritation whatsoever so I don't know now that it's off my skin I'm fine but you know it's kind of weird I am going to try this again maybe try it tomorrow when my skin is not freshly exfoliated and see how it goes I'm not having a like bad reaction to it but it was just a little bit intensely tingly so if you guys got this did you experience that or is it just me like my skin could just not like an ingredient in it I mean I'm not mad at it my skin feels clean it feels a little too clean I feel like it did strip some of the moisture out of my skin a lot of cleansers do that and I typically don't go for those cleansers once I realize that they do that. That's just a first impression. So I will try this cleanser again. I don't know that I'm going to fall in love with it. It kind of the odds are stacked against it because I don't like foaming cleansers. I'm having this like tingly experience and just overall, you know what I mean? But I'm not done with it. 
I'm still gonna give it more chances. Right, more skincare, we have the Tula Glow and Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. This is very cooling. I already kind of like felt it on my hand. So I'm actually excited to use this. My under eye could definitely use it today. I stayed up too late and followed that by getting up early for some reason, which is not my norm. I am not a early riser, peppy in the morning type of person. Oh, I expected there to be like more there when I like went to pat it in, but it really sunk into the skin. Okay, maybe my under eye is just like dry and thirsty. It feels a little bit cooling. It's not like incredibly like icy feeling or anything like that. It just feels a little bit cool. I would like it to have a little bit more moisture. It feels hydrating, but it doesn't feel, there's no slip to it whatsoever. You know, I can't like gently move the product around. If that makes sense, it kind of like sat down as soon as it got onto the skin and it's sinking in really, really fast. So I think if you want something a little bit more lightweight that really sinks in, you probably really love this. Cooling and brightening. I feel like, you know, it does that, so. We also have this M Green Grass CBD Head to Toe 100 milligrams of CBD. So I am going to try this actually on the face. Now you can use this anywhere. It says to use it in tough spots or in any areas on the body. Now I'm going to use this especially where I have psoriasis patches. I actually started having some mild psoriasis on my chest. I've never had it there so I'm going to put a little bit there as well. It was like right around my collarbone. This is not fragrant whatsoever. You just smell, you know, like a natural kind of scent to it, just the ingredients, but it does not smell fragrant at all. It does have some coconut based ingredients in it. You know, keep that in mind. It may be a better suited body product for a lot of people than something to put on the face. I'm willing to give it a go because I don't have problems at all. I use the Kopari um, Starry Eye Balm, which is coconut all the time. And I always put too much on, you know, I just, even though I know better, I do it. So I put it all the way down here and I never have like clogged pores or breakouts. So I feel like my skin just doesn't react to it the way that some people's skin do. Skin does. So, so far so good. I mean, it's CBD, so it's supposed to be very calming, soothing, and have a lot of benefits to it. My skin certainly feels much calmer now and it feels... I don't know. It just feels good. It feels a lot more comfortable than right after that cleanser. I also have this... I don't know if it's Malin or... Okay, forget it. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to say Malin and Goats. Recovery Treatment Oil. It's a fast absorbing treatment. Synthesizes a blend of nine antioxidant rich oils that nourish and hydrate to help address the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It says seven drops on clean skin. I put that CBD on, but I put just a tiny, tiny bit. So my skin feels pretty much, you know, like fresh but comfortable. So I just put a little bit on my hand here. I am more dry, so for me layering products is normal. I love to put oils on. That feels really nice. Now this has a pretty high price tag. I'm not like super familiar with the brand but I think I have two products now from them. I love oils. My skin feels great. I would say this is like medium thickness. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a term but it's not a dry oil that like sinks in right away and it like doesn't sit on the surface at all but it's also not thick and heavy if that makes sense. Next up we got the Pure Lease Perfect Glow BB Cream SPF 30. This is the perfect time for something like this for lighter makeup days when it's warmer outside and it's sunny. It gives you some protection. I think some people maybe got the wrong color. Hey, bud. Okay. All right. Oh, shoot. I left something else in there. Sorry, bud. It's the lid. It keeps coming off. My boy just had to get in the box. So again, BB cream, oil-free, moisturizing, natural looking coverage, matte meets glowy. I don't know what matte meets glowy means. I said that last time, maybe natural finish. But I also have this brush. So this is the Billion Dollar Brows Sculpting Duo Brush. So I think this is more for use with like, I would assume cream, like contour, cream bronzer, things like that. But I'm just gonna give it a go with this BB cream. Oh, what I was saying. I totally blanked out. I think some people got the wrong shade in BB cream. They gave like a credit. I used the credit too, but I got the shade fair and I feel like it's the only shade I could possibly be in this. I mean, not bad. 
compared to my neck it looks pretty good and I asked you guys too like did you want me to try this brush and that's why I'm trying it now so actually I know this isn't meant for foundation but it's doing pretty good with this BB and it seems to be not soaking up a ton of product I'm gonna take my stands out beauty sponge and just lightly pat to smooth out any brush strokes which this was not bad usually that's my like pet peeve with foundation brushes is they leave a lot of like brush strokes or swirls or patterns on your skin but this one was not bad at all I actually kind of like it I'm just gonna quickly conceal I've been obsessed with this hourglass vanish concealer and because this is a BB cream I'm just gonna keep it right under the eye and I'm not gonna go crazy with the concealer which you don't need a lot of this one, so it's going a long way. Look at that freaking coverage. Oh, I'm just gonna use a little bit, but it just covers so well. All right, so I'm actually gonna go off camera. I'm going to do my brows and go ahead and use some powder for my face, and then we will come back and use more products. All right, so that's a little bit better. I look a little pale, but what's new? So we've got the Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette. Now this one I actually already had, so I am using my old one, but it's the same palette that I got in my box. The other one I'm going to put in a giveaway or give to someone because I am not keeping duplicates. So first up, I'm going to try the other end of this Billion Dollar Brows brush. It is a little bit more domed, whereas the other side is flat. So I'm going to try this for my nose, and I'm just going to start with the light contour. I tend to use the light the most, and then I dip into the medium I'm gonna keep it a little bit more subtle since I have a lot of my like natural skin tone peeking through with that BB cream. I don't want to go too crazy. Now I'm gonna dip into the same light shade and use that kind of like I would a bronzer and then I'm gonna take a little bit of that medium contour just in some very like focused areas. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush into the medium shade. I don't really use the highlight shades in this. I've used them a couple times just to like brighten up an area, which is essentially kind of the idea. And I'm adding actually just a little bit of this deep highlight as a way to warm it up a little bit. So I'm actually doing light, medium, and deep and just kind of bronzing, if you will, since that's got a lot of warmth in it. I'm going to take a little bit of Dandelion Blush from this Benefit palette. What do you guys think about the YouTube drama? I am so like, A, I just think that you never really know someone on the internet, even though that there are people like me who are literally just here who love makeup and are just like honest about stuff. but. There's so much craziness and I'm just like, why? Like, why are we doing this? I'm gonna highlight with the Huda highlighting palette. I think this is Pink Sands. Yes, Pink Sands, woo. Let's go ahead and talk about these last products because none of that stuff matters really, you know? I got the Zoeva Eyeshadow Fix Matte Longwear. That's just what it says. So it's eyeshadow fix. And just dab, 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 dab. And we're following that with the Tardis Pro Palette. So this is like the original Tardis Pro Palette. I think they have another version, like the Remix. They always come out with palettes. And I felt like for once, this palette actually did something for me. And again, I'm trying not to like blind you guys, but show you the colors. So it has some variation in it. It is not that same Tarte palette that literally has brown and mauve. They do a lot of those. I'm gonna take this Sigma E25 and I'm gonna pick up Indie. We're gonna go for something really, really basic to start with. Ooh, a lot of product on that. This is showing up much darker than I really anticipated because it looks pretty light. Most of my like go-to eyeshadow brushes are dirty right now and I'm being that lazy person who just doesn't want to like get up and pick a different brush. I'm gonna go for No Filter. It's this one. A little mauve like a darker mauve. I just feel like this is one of those days where I'm not feeling like creative and my eyeshadow game is just not on point. I think I'm going to keep it super simple. I'm going to pick up some of the shade Glam right here and go on the lid. It's pretty, but I'm going to wet my brush. And I have just stuck with that shade No Filter to blend over the gold a little bit and then I'm doing my lower lash line. 
I did something like completely competing with what I have on today. I did a warm eye while I've got this like gray dress on. I don't know. Now I do have this Kat Von D Inkwell liner, which I feel like I'm gonna have to shake up 30,000 times. I got this in the blue. The color was stunning, such a beautiful color, but it dries like, like the actual product on the tip as you're trying to apply it. it dries so freaking fast, like nobody's business, and gets really crunchy if you try to like layer and fix it. Say it's a little bit crooked and you're trying to just like lightly go over it to fix that, it gets like super crunchy. Sometimes color can affect formula, but from what I've seen with this, this is just not that great of a formulation and I think they're trying to get rid of them. I will say this like really fine tip is a little stiff but it really hugs the lash line. So say for instance I was just trying to line the lash line really tightly it actually works well but from what I just did the brush is completely like dry. As you can see like barely any product coming off of it but it is intensely black at first so you just have to go back in so many times that it annoys the life out of me i hate this liner so much all right i think that one eye is decent it's just gonna take forever to get the other one to look like it so i'm gonna do my other eye off camera and then do some mascara and then we will finish off with lips and i got something in my box to use for that all right finally we are down to the last item and it was actually a duo so this is the bodyography lip duo and it is the shades rosewood and pouty so i'm gonna attempt to do like a little ombre ish kind of look with this and see how it goes now i have a pet peeve with these already and i know other people had it too these lids do not stay on and I'm like how do you how do you get that wrong but anyway whatever I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of a Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of a Lime Crime Gloss. Really just doing that to like meld the colors in a little bit better. But I'm not using a lot. I'm literally just taking the tiniest bit. So both of those colors are actually really pretty. But I like the combination that it gave going together. It kind of like just melded together really. It's not much of an ombre but that is what the colors look like and as you saw them applied. So that is everything. I had intended to like do my hair and try to make the whole thing look cute but honestly I think I'm gonna go change and then do my hair because the whole um, dress silver necklace with this makeup thing is not working for me. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of my BoxyCharm products for the month of June. Sorry that it has spilled over into July, but it did take forever to get these products. So I know a lot of you guys said that too. One of you guys commented and said you're not getting your box until like mid-July for your June box. And I'm like, Ooh, that's really late. So sorry if you guys had that too. Mine was mine was late, but at least I got it in the month of June. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so, so much for hanging with me for a little bit. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are doing amazing and good things are happening for you. And that's it. Thank you guys again. And I will see you really soon in my next video. Bye guys.